Shalom, everyone. Shalom, people. Good evening. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Wherever you all are. Shalom and thank you for joining us. I'm here with Brother Otis again. Shalom to you, brother. Yes, same to you, bro. Good to have you on again. Um, right, let's um, see who we've got online. All right, shalom, Sister Shirley. Doing the moderating. Much love. Greetings, Sister Shirley. Okay, who we got? Feel free to let us know where you're all um, logging on from, what area, so we can understand where our family is connected all right let's go from the start we go joyce mckelvey shalom sunny there's a raya lyons shalom his lips my heart deborah kathy i think it is nancy belanja natalie marie and Dreddy Y1, Natasha James coming from New York City. Shalom. Lynx. Thank you for the greetings. Got Deborah from Michigan, Antonio, Texas, Sunny, Mississippi, Joyce McKelvey, Missouri. Well, a lot of people from well, nearly everyone in the US at the moment. It's our US family, yeah. right? they're all there. Yars Love, New Jersey. Dreddy Brooklyn, Babylon Brooklyn, <laughs> but we're, we're leaving Babylon soon, so it's all good. Hallelujah. Sister Shirley coming from Pennsylvania, Clarice from the US, um, Shalom from Brooklyn, Felicia, Kentucky, Kathy from Denmark, first one outside of America. Mm. <laughs> um, there's a Raya Lyons, Nashville, Tennessee, Virginia, his lips, my heart. Um, called Chosen Faithful, Shalom, London. Well, we've got one Londoner mm -hmm. well, turning we, us. We've got another one. <laughs> another one somewhere. Um, Yahuwah's Jewel, Concord. Um, Eton Ben Israel from Charleston, Tatiana from UK, Shalom, um, Shin Godzilla from Miami, Florida, Nancy Belanger, Ontario, Canada, um, Mikhail Ayan Yehuda from Washington, DC, Deloach 97, Ohio, and Lewis, first one for the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Gary Henry, South London crew. See my, up. I see my South London there in the house. <laughs> see that? Mary Warrior. I'm not sure where, but yeah. Uh -huh. And um, wow. Mill from Harlow via East London. Big up. Love that. Bonita Clark. Shalom. Blessings. Mary Warrior, Shalom from California, Obidaya, Waynesville, Missouri, and yeah, I think that's everyone I've done. Benita Clark, Virginia, Aharonia, Israel, Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. Shalom. Big up everyone in the in the chat and shalom. Yes. Much love for joining. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I, I love when we go through the names and the, the places and we find out people from across the globe. Uh, I know it's predominantly a, a US, <laughs> but when you hear like even London and um, Denmark, Trinidad and Tobago, it's, it's great. It just shows how you yeah, people are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, so obviously we have all seen the title of uh, today's message and um, I think it's one that needs to kind of be discussed a little bit because it's not something I would say is, um, is new in terms of those who are looking. I mean, this has been on the radar for a few years, but obviously now we're, we're in the actual year of 2024. 
uh, many people are now referring to the eclipse um, on the 8th of April, a total eclipse that will be seen in some parts of the world. And we're going to discuss that a bit more now. But what I've been noticing either from comments or even just personal conversations is that people are saying, well, could this eclipse be the three days of darkness or is this the sign for the three days of darkness? And we just need to make sure that if we do anything in this life, anything in this world, the word has to come first. We have to go by what the word says in order to understand what is happening, the signs of the times. We don't go by the signs of the times and then fit the word into it. We take the word, we read the word, we understand the word, and then we fit the signs of the times into the word. And if it fits, then we hold fast. And if it doesn't, then we throw it out. And as you know, those who follow the channel for a long time, that is what we believe in. We believe that the word must come first. So we're gonna have a look at a few things today and we're going to use the word as our guide in order to get a full understanding. And I want lots of um, engagement wherever possible in the chat room. So with regards to questions, comments, and your own understanding in terms of what you're seeing, because I always say that not one person has the full picture. We all need each other to learn things and understand things. Whether you're a teacher, whether you're a pastor, whatever you are, you don't know it all. We need to rely on each other, those that have the Rurak dwelling in them or working with them so we can understand things. So please do share your comments and your true feelings about um, the things that we're gonna discuss. And hopefully we will all learn collectively. Um, so I've got a, as usual, a brief uh, presentation that I'm going to share with you. Uh, bear with me a moment. Yeah, sorry to cut. One thing I'll say to everyone, please share the stream because as is mentioned, sometimes teachings aren't urgent, but this one is definitely urgent given how close we could be or how close we think we are to the three days of darkness. Yes, This is something that some people that are probably going down the wrong path might need to watch to be able to distinguish between what's been put out there on mainstream media and what we're trying to seek and find and be led by in the word. So if you can definitely share it with those that you feel this might help. Good point. Good point. I see Sister Ch Shirley promoting that also in the in the chat. Um, very important things for us to to understand and and to share with others. So on that note, let me share my screen with you. Finally, <laughs> all right, all right, everybody. Sorry about that. Don't know what was going on there. Um, and thank you for those that prayed because I believe in the power of prayer. Right, so let's make a start. Um, so yes, we're here to talk today about this uh, total solar eclipse, which is scheduled for the 8th of April, 2024. And the question we're asking is, is this the three days of darkness or is it a distraction? Now you'll notice that in brackets I've put from the three days of darkness. And the reason why I put that is because the original title was just saying, is this the three days of darkness or is it a distraction? And I had one or two comments where people were asking me or saying they don't believe that the solar eclipse is a distraction. And that's not what I meant. I didn't mean, is it a distraction in general? I mean, is it a distraction from the three days of darkness? So in other words, whilst everyone or many people are looking at this as the three days of darkness, is it actually a distraction from the three days of darkness? And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means as we go through, but we're gonna start at the very first place about the Most High and how does the Most High give us signs? Because that is what's gonna tell us what we need to understand. Now, when we go to Genesis 1.14, it reads, and Yah said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So we know that the Most High has said that there should be light in the firmament and those lights to divide day and night as to also let us know that they are for signs, season, days and years. So in other words, 
They are to tell us what's going on as signs and they're to mark the seasons, the days and the years. And when we look in the Strong's Concordance, uh, the word light, it's reference H3974, we get the word moa, which stands for lights and luminaries, which are the sun, the moon, the stars, etc. So what we need to understand, everybody, is that the signs we see in the sky, be it from the sun, be it from the moon, be it from the stars, be it from any of the luminaries, are signs that the Most High has put up there for signs and seasons and also to divide time, days and years. And so going back to the original question, which was, is the three days of darkness, it, this sign, is it the three days of darkness, i.e. the eclipse, or is it just a distraction from the three days of darkness? We know who put these signs in the skies. It is, of course, the most high. So when I say, is it a distraction? I mean, is it a distraction from the three days of darkness, not the fact that the signs given are not important or a distraction from other things? We know that the signs are from the most high. But the question that we want to know is, is the signs that we are seeing on the 8th of April leading up to the total eclipse, is that the three days of darkness or is it a distraction from the three days of darkness and we are going to find this out together now this is just a very, very brief presentation mainly talking about the things that we are seeing at the moment i suppose in the news but always as i say we always have to go back to scripture first so let's first of all define what a total eclipse is because that will then give us the understanding of what it is that we are going to be looking at come that particular time. You can just find this anywhere on the internet. Uh, what is a total eclipse? The easy definition, a total solar eclipse happens when the moon passes between the sun and the earth, completely blocking the face of the sun. People located in the center of the moon shadow when it hits earth will experience a total eclipse. The sky will darken as if, there were, as if it were dusk or dawn or sunrise or sunset. So that's basically the definition of a total eclipse. And we also can see from this diagram here that shows us basically what is going to occur, which is that you see the sun, you see the moon uh, in between the sun and the earth and the moon blocks part or full area of the sun depending on what part of earth you are and that's pretty much the solar eclipse that it's more of a case of an obstruction an obscure blocking of the sun from the earth via the moon and so if we have that as an understanding it will be very easy for us to see what the 8th of april is and see what it isn't now Again, we can see that the next date for a solar eclipse, which is a full solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse, is Monday the 8th of April. And again, we see the description that a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, thereby obscuring the view of the sun from a small part of the Earth, totally or partially. In this case, this is supposed to be a partial uh, uh, sorry, a total solar eclipse. So this is what we're going to look at now. Now, I want us to do, now that we have this understanding of what a solar eclipse is, I want us to play a very, very brief game, okay? And this game is called Does Say a Fear. So I'm going to give you two statements. I'm going to give you one statement first, and I want you to put in the chat Number one, because that's number one for the first statement. And I want you to put whether it's true or false. And then at the end of that, I'm going to give you a second statement. And I want you to do the same thing. Put a two in the chat and put two equals true or false. OK, so very simple. But I'm going to give them to you one at a time. So not together, one at a time. And I want you to engage in the chat. Put number one equals true or number one equals false. And then when I give you the second one, I want you to put number two equals true or number two equals false. All right. Are you all ready? Okay, let's go. So number one, 
And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yah thy Allah, that I will cause the sun to be blocked by the moon and I will darken the earth in the clear day. That is statement number one. So I want you to put in the chat number one equals true or number one equals false. I'll give you a couple of a uh, few seconds to do that. And then we will move on to the next statement. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yadai Allah, that I will cause the sun to be blocked by the moon and I will darken the earth in the clear day. So I'm looking in the chat. I'm seeing number one equals truth. I'm seeing number one equals false. So we've got a mixed bag, but I'm seeing quite a lot of truths. Okay. I'm seeing some forces, a mixed bag, basically. All right. Okay. So still some more coming in. All right. So I'm going, I've seen number one equals true. Uh, Amos eight and nine. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the second statement. All right. So this is the second statement, which is coming on your screen now. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yadai Allah, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in clear day. Second statement, put number two equals true or number two equals false. And again, I'll give you a few minutes, a few seconds to just put your comments um, and answers in the comments box. Yeah, I hear some backtracking. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they will. That's why I didn't show them together. That's it. That's it. Okay, I'm seeing trues. A lot of trues now. I'm seeing some people that are using trues when they use false. Which one is it? <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. Good. Good, everyone. All right. So. I'm sure you've now, now that you've seen the second statement, I'm sure that you've now had the understanding that the first statement is the one that is incorrect. That is not what Yah said. And the second statement is the one that is correct. That is what Yah said, which is in its full, Amos 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass that in that day, saith Yah thy Allah, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Now we have already seen what a solar eclipse or a partial or a full solar eclipse is, that the sun does not go down. The sun is merely blocked by the moon. It's obscured. It is prevented from being seen, but the sun itself does not go down. And we should know by now that Yah says what he means and he means what he says. If he says that the sun will go down at noon, then that's exactly what he means. If he says that the sun will be hidden by the moon, then that's what he will say. But he doesn't say that. So straight away, if we have our eyes on, our spiritual eyes and our logical eyes also, we can see from the word what the so total solar eclipse on April the 8th isn't. It isn't going to be the three days of darkness because the sun is not going to go down. The sun is merely going to be hidden for a certain part of time. OK, so we can really just stop right there because the word tells us everything we need to know. If we would just read it and if we would just understand what it's saying, that the sun is not going to go down on April the 8th, the sun is going to be hidden for a period of time by the moon until the, it passes by and then the sun will be seen again. But Most High tells us that the sun will go down at noon on the day of the darkness. So it's a very different scenario to what the total eclipse is or any type of eclipse. And this is why we have to really understand the word family because the word tells us everything we need to know. We don't need to worry about what the uh, wicked or what the elites or what these other people are saying. We just need to go to the word and know the word for ourselves. And then we will have the answers we need. So as I said, we could stop right there, but let's continue to look at some more things. Now, as I've said, Yah doesn't say that the sun will be obstructed or covered or blocked. He says it will go down. 
In other words, sunset will occur at noon. So what we generally see in the evening when the sun sets, that's what we will see at noon, but in a more rapid fashion. And then the earth will be covered in darkness. So always put Yah's word first, always, because without the, his word, we're going to be left confused. We're going to be left following the things of the wicked, and we don't want to be in that position. Now, let's look at um, April the 8th, the solar eclipse, and understand that the solar eclipse on April the 8th is not a worldwide event. What do I mean by that? Because the moon is much smaller than the earth, however, its shadow only covers a small area of the earth's surface. Any solar eclipse, therefore, will only be visible from a certain region on the earth. So what we have to understand is this solar eclipse that is coming up and solar eclipses that have happened in the past, there are many parts of the world that won't even know that this is taking place. Many parts of the world will not be affected because it is not a worldwide event, it is an event secluded to a particular area whenever there is a solar eclipse partial or a full solar eclipse depending on what part of the world you're in it may be relevant to you but there'll be people on the other side of the world that will have no clue that it's going on except it be for the news or except it be for things like social media and so the solar eclipse is not a worldwide event the three days of darkness, however, is a worldwide event. It is an event that will take effect everywhere in the world and will affect everybody. Yah will cause the sun to go down at noon and he will darken the earth, pause, in the clear day. So it's the earth that will be darkened, not a region of the earth or not a part of the earth. It will be the whole earth. Now, if we look in the book of Luke, chapter 21, we've covered this before on previous live streams. I'll start in verse 34, where it says, And take heed to yourself, lest at any times your hearts be overcharged with sophiatin and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare, it shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Again. This is a worldwide event. It will take place and affect everybody on the whole earth, not just in one part of the earth or in one continent. This is a worldwide event. And Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10 says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Again, a worldwide event. This is something that is affecting everybody everywhere. So I need you to understand that these things that we are seeing on the news, these things that are being promoted are not worldwide events. Now, I know many of our brethren online, our brothers, our sisters are from the US. So the vast majority of the room from the USA, I know many parts of the US will be affected by the solar eclipse but believe it or not the world is bigger than the united states of america there are many other countries and continents that will not be affected by this event that will not even know that it's taking place so for those people that are associating it with the three days of darkness or with events that are going to be worldwide you are mistaken it is not a worldwide event it is, however, a sign, and this is what we're going to delve into a bit more deeper to find out what the sign is, because I don't think anybody really truly knows what the sign is, but we have some possibilities in terms of the timeline that we're looking at, and maybe that will give us a bigger clue, and we'll see that as we go through. Now, there is a video on the channel, it was a live stream done a good few weeks ago, maybe six weeks ago, where it talks about Psalm 91 revealing the three days of darkness. It was the second part. The link is in the description. If you look at this video, it talks a lot about the signs of the times and the things that will be going on towards the darkness taking place, mainly being that life will be carrying on as normal. Life will be normal in terms of how life is today. Now, I said on that video that when I say life going on as normal, I'm not saying normal as in good normal. I'm saying normal in the sense that the way how things are today is the way it will be towards the time of the darkness. And so if you haven't seen this live stream or this video, the link is in the description. 
I would encourage you to watch it. In addition to those that may not understand the three days of darkness, this short 25 minute video, which is also in the description linked, the sign of Jonah, the three days of darkness is this generation sign of Jonah. I would encourage you to watch this because this shows us what I believe is the only sign about the three days of darkness. And that sign is not the total eclipse as we've already seen. So again, this video is in the description. Please do watch it. But let us look at some of these things with regards to the total solar eclipse. So there are things happening around what I've heard reports of, I've heard it on the news, that there are schools that are going to be closing for this total solar eclipse on the 8th of April. There are people that are booking hotels and Airbnbs to go and witness this phenomena. And there's merchandise and memorabilia that are being available, made available, being sold, people making a living on the back of this total solar eclipse, this event that is going to take place. Now, does this look to you like life going on as normal, bearing in mind it is a non-pagan feast day? Now, we know that sometimes when they have the pagan feast days, life does seem to stop for that moment. I.e., It might be a holiday, so schools will be closed. People might go on holiday, book in their hotels and Airbnbs and so on and so forth. We know that that happens when the pagans celebrate their feast day. But as far as I'm aware, April the 8th isn't any sort of pagan feast day. It's just a normal Monday. But yet life will not be going on as normal because they don't close schools just for the sake of a solar eclipse or just any other event. And people booking hotels and Airbnbs to witness this event and selling merchandise. These things don't happen. So when you see something like this happening, know that this is not life going on as normal. So therefore, if we look at what we've seen before, that when these things take place, life will be going on as normal. We know that this solar eclipse cannot be the sign for the three days of darkness. But we do want to find out what it is or what it could be, at least. Now, many of these elites and these people that are involved are saying that people should stock up on food and water and fuel before the eclipse. Now, why are they saying this? I'm going to play you a very short clip, a two minute clip that want you to pay close attention to what is being said so we can see their perspective. We know that the word comes first, but as I said in the beginning, we must use the word and fit events into the word rather than seeing the events and trying to fit the word into the events. The word has to come first. But since we know what it says in Amos chapter eight, let's listen to what these people are saying about this solar eclipse. Soon, day will turn into night for a once-in-a-lifetime moment happening in Northeast Ohio. Although the eclipse is still a ways away on April 8th, a word of caution is being issued now. What we could have is, is crowds here that we're not used to, and we're not set up infrastructure-wise for that. So we don't have, we don't have the, the roads for that. Lorraine County Emergency Management Director Dave Freeman says the area is a special destination for this eclipse. Along the path of totality, that's where you're going to have the longest eclipse, right? So that's where you're going to see the entire thing from start to finish. And we're looking at right around four minutes or so for the totality. Freeman is bracing for potential challenges with thousands of tourists expected to descend on the area. A lot of the roads here are two lanes. You know, this is not Chicago. It's not Cleveland where we have a bunch of four lane, six lane roads coming in and going out. So the traffic could be pretty extreme here if we get crowds way above what we expect. He advises people who live in Lorain County to have food, fuel and water on hand. That's where the three days of food and water comes from. Not that there's going to be any shortage on food or water, but what there may be is difficulty getting anywhere. Inside one business, Park Lanes in downtown Amherst, there's more excitement than worry about the temporary population boom. I am excited to see the streets full and what it can do for the businesses down here. Yes, yes, everybody. We are here and we really welcome people and we have such a great time and just really want to welcome them to our establishment. It's still too early to know just how many people are expected to visit Lorraine County. And this advice, Freeman says, is not intended to scare. It's just to prepare for the unexpected. This is not doomsday. Prepare yourself. Just be ready for it. It's, it's always that um, failing to plan is planning to fail. 
In Lorain County, Maya Balai, Fox 8 News. Very interesting, very interesting. I hope you paid attention to what that man said. What I wanted to do after showing you that clip was I wanted to show you a little bit about how um, how my mind works in terms of the things that I think or the things that I thought when I saw that clip. And um, let's see if you picked up any of these things or if these things came to you when you saw it. So the first thing I saw on that clip was this gentleman in inverted commas doing this. Now this on its own is not enough to say somebody is doing something sinister, but it was something that I observed. And again, maybe I'm just reaching here, maybe I'm connecting dots that are not there, but this was the first thing that I saw. And then the next thing that I saw was that there was a logo on this gentleman's uh, top, again, inverted commas, on his jacket, that has a symbol that kind of looks like an X. It kind of looks like an X, which reminds me of Planet X or reminds me of um, something that we should be keeping our eyes on. And again, I don't know. Am I reaching? Is it a coincidence? Is it just me thinking a bit randomly? I'm not sure. But these are the things I picked up. X marks the spot. So if we've seen this sign also recently, one of the social media platforms has rebranded itself conveniently. And that person who owns it happens to be someone that does a lot of dealings in the space and in the luminaries and so on and so forth. Is it a coincidence? Is it all connected? I leave that to you. But in addition to that, I picked this up, which I found this was quite interesting. Lorraine County Emergency Management Director Dave Freeman, 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 Director Dave Freeman. Now, did anyone pick up on his name? Dave Freeman's or could that be short for Dave Freemasons? Uh, look, I don't know. Maybe I'm just reaching Maybe this has nothing to do with anything. Maybe this is just my mind in overactive mode. I don't know what it is. But I'm also one that doesn't believe in coincidences. So when I see certain signs, I pay attention to them for sure, but I don't put them down to just being random events. I put them down to potentially being something that more than what meets the eye. And I know that the most high says in Amos 3 and 7, he does nothing except he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. First, the enemy is also confound to the same principle. He has to reveal it himself via his people. So look, take these things that are most high for yourself, but these are the things that I picked up. This is how my mind kind of works when I see things. I do think that there's more than what meets the eye. And so these are the people who are telling us what is going to happen and why these things are going to happen. Now, did you notice that this man said that people need to be stocked up on a certain amount of food? These are men's subliminal messages. Now, are they being nice to warn the people or are they just trying to throw us off track? Now, he said stock up on three days worth of food and water. Why didn't he say four days worth? Or why didn't he say two days worth or a week's worth? Why did it have to be three days? Now, are these people playing with our emotions here or is there something they're trying to hide or are they trying to throw us off track? We have to be wise to these things, Yasharal. They said, make sure that you have fuel and other supplies, etc. Why? Why do we need to have these things? This social, solar eclipse is only going to be for just over four minutes, which we'll see in a moment. It's not a long thing. So why is all this preparation going into it? What are they trying to hide? Are they being nice or are they trying to tell us something that they have planned? But we need to be in a position where we're not worried about these things, Yasharal, because Proverbs 29 and 25 says that the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso put his trust in Yah shall be safe. Those that trust in the Most High will be kept safe. Man cannot do anything, though man might have a plan and might, man might have evil things they're planning to bring to pass. But if you trust in the Most High, you shall be kept safe. So this is what we need to do. This is where we need to be. And these things that we see on the news, we don't need to ignore them, but we just need to know that the Most High's counsel will stand. <clears throat> so they try to control the masses through fear, but we have to overcome the elites through faith. 
that is our antidote to this whole situation. Still, though, we still want to know what the total solar eclipse on April the 8th is, because it is significant, as we saw in the beginning, signs in the skies are from the most high, and they are to do with the signs and the season. But it says approximately that this total solar eclipse will be about 115 miles wide in terms of where it's going to travel, and it will be for about four minutes and 28 seconds, so just over four minutes. So it's not a long time that this, this event is due to affect everyone, but yet why are they telling people to do all these things, take all these drastic actions, including closing schools on a non-pagan feast day? It just doesn't really make sense. So clearly something is going on, but the question is what? Now, as I've already mentioned, this whole solar eclipse on this date will last just over four minutes which is not a very long time. Now, could it be longer? Could something happen at the time which will prove it to be longer? Possibly so. But if anybody understands the way how the Most High's luminaries work, they do work on clockwork. And so I do believe that it will be what we have seen um, before in the past when there's been total solar eclipses. Now, the last time there was a total solar eclipse that affected America, was, believe it or not, in 2017, which is almost seven years ago. I think it was in August 2017. And so we are almost seven years from that particular event. And those of you that are biblical scholars will know that seven is a very important number. So is this a coincidence or is it a parallel? Now, the last total solar eclipse, as I mentioned, as seen in parts in the US was in August the 21st, 2017. It was then followed with the Revelation 12 sign on 23rd of September, 2017, which was actually on the date that many people say was the Feast of Trumpets. Was this a sign to say that we were in the penultimate seven years or the seven week of years, the last Shemitah cycle? For anyone who doesn't know, the Shemitah cycle is a group of seven years. So seven years counts as one Shemitah cycle, very similar to the seven-day week that we have six days, and then the seventh day is the Shabbat. And the Shemitah cycle is the same where you have six years, and the seventh year is the Shabbatical year or the Shemitah year. So the last time we saw, or parts of the US saw, a total solar eclipse was in August 2017. And then the Revelation 12 sign followed a month later on the Feast of Trumpets. Was that indicating that that period coming up would be the second last of so the penultimate seven years or the seven uh, year Shemitah cycle? So the second last one, which we have now finished. And if so, could this total solar eclipse, which will be seen in parts of the US on April the 8th, 2024, so almost seven years later, could this be the one that shows that the Revelation 12 is now in effect, meaning we are entering into the last seven years, the last week of years of the Shemitah cycle, which will take place again on the Feast of Trumpets come September 24. And many people will liken that last Shemitah year to be Daniel 70 week or the tribulation stroke great tribulation, which again, by biblical understanding, points to be a seven-year period. So could this solar eclipse, could it be that that's what that's indicating, similar to what the first one did back in 2017? Because I think that if you go back before 2017 to find the last time there was a total solar eclipse in that part of the world, the United States, I think it was sometime in 1979. So a good amount of years before that. And the one prior to that was even longer. So you see, these things are not common. And for us to have two within a seven year period has to be indicating something. Is it a coincidence? Is it a parallel? I'll leave you to take it to the most high to get more understanding. But I'm going to give you some suggestions as to what they could be. And some of them are very plausible. Uh, one or two that I actually lean towards. And some of them maybe not so much, but all of them could be plausible. So we have to take these, these things to the most high. 
So let's look at some of the other possibilities of what this total solar eclipse could be. Starting with, could it be the warning, the sign, the signal for an invasion of the land? Invasion of the land by war, by UFOs, fallen angels, possibility, it could be. Or could it just be it has no meaning and it's just a coincidence? I very much doubt it, but it, I put it out there. Or could it be that it is the covenant with many? What I just described, the Shemitah week of years, the last Shemitah week of years, which you find in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27, something we may read later. Could it be that? We will see. Could it also be? Genesis 15, 13 through to 15, the 400 year prophecy. Could it be that the 400 years is up? Again, that's something that we will read, I'm sure, during our comments and questions and answers. But that is another marker that it could be to do with that prophecy. And could it be a warning that the three days of darkness is imminent? So taking place after the solar eclipse, as we see in Amos 8 and 9 to possibility, but maybe not. Or could it be to do with the US elections and politics? We know many things are going on in the United States and we know many people there are working for Hasatan. And so could it be a warning to show us things that are coming to pass in that side of the world since that's where the total solar eclipse will be seen? We will have to wait and see. Or could it be to do with planet X and planet Nibiru? Because this is something that is um, incoming. I, are we still okay? Yeah, mine's okay. Okay, all right. Yes, sorry, people. Just not sure if the internet is uh, playing up. So, yes, again, could it be this phenomenon as well? because who knows? Or finally, let's get your ideas, let's get your thoughts, let's get your understanding and what you think it could be. This is just me presenting what some of the possibilities. And personally, I do believe in the Shemitah cycles, the, the seven year period, and I believe that we are now entering that final cycle. And so I lean heavily towards that this is the signal to tell us that this is something that is going to take place. But I'm going to throw it out to you. So your questions and comments on the matter. Let's have a look. We're going back from the initial. Uh, Let's yeah, for these first. No, we'll go back from the initial. Yeah, okay. Hey. okay, so does anybody have any ideas about this total solar eclipse and what it could be? Can you all still hear me? Mm. So Clarice has got a response okay <clears throat> so clearly says esau is planning something else wicked whilst the most high has amos 8 9 in store okay i mean for sure esau is always planning wickedness that goes without saying um but we are talking about a sign here that is from the most high right because the sign is in the luminaries and so if the sign is from the most high, what is he trying to tell us? What is he indicating that this sign is signaling? What is it about? That's what we want to understand. Um, 
I see Brother Antonio says, the end of Babylon. I like that idea. I like that idea. That could be a sign for the Yahudin to say Babylon has come to its end. Very possible. Very, very possible. What else do we have? Uh, I see um, Mary Warrior. It is a warning, a sign for repentance. That's another very good one. The Most High is always encouraging us to be in repentance and to repent. And so, for sure, that could be a sign for us to make sure that we are in constant repentance and communion with him. The most high servant, 400 years of captivity is up. The X that will be formed after it crosses the path of the last total solar eclipse marks the X or the Tav, which means completion. Another great observation. Uh, Brother Antonio sent me some things about um, this X marks the spot as well, which definitely lines up with that. And again, that's another thing I like the sound of because it's the kind of thing the Most High would, would do to give us the signal. Um, Nancy Bellinger, I think he's saying be ready. Oh, sure. He's, he's always telling us to be ready. But the question is, be ready for what? What are, to we, what are we to be ready for? Any more? Any more things that we think this could be? One, one thing we know it isn't, we know it isn't for the three days of darkness because we've already seen that the three days of darkness, the sun goes down, the sun is not hidden. And so what I need you to understand, Yasharal, is if a sign is given and the sign is not for the three days of darkness as this total solar eclipse isn't, then that means the three days of darkness has to either be after it or it has to be before it. And if everybody is focusing on a date in the future and not concentrating on a date in the present or the very near future, then we may be caught unawares. Mm -hmm. So when you see this date of April the 8th and everyone paying their attention to April the 8th, turn your attention to March, family. Look at what is in front of you. And if what is in front of you doesn't come to pass, then by all means, look towards April, look towards May and so on and so forth. But until you get out of the month you're currently in, where the Most High is directing people to pay attention to, then we are going to be caught unawares. Look, let me give you an example. Um, I've shared some videos with you on the channel about the uh, revelation that I've been given. And in the past, way back in 2022 and then early into 2023, I had an understanding that the three days of darkness would be in 2024. This was back in late 2022, early 2023, before the Passover season. But when Passover came in 2023, I still prepared as if the three days of darkness was coming. I still got my food in. I still got my water in. I still filled up buckets in my house. I still had my cooking facilities. I hadn't put any black bags and stuff on my windows, but that's something that I would only do on the day in question before it happened. But all the equipment was ready, even though the revelation I received and the biblical understanding I received pointed towards 2024. But because Passover 2023 was there, I still prepared myself. I still got ready. I was still alert just in case something happened. And of course, nothing happened. We move on. So we should be in the same position now. We should be prepared. We should be ready. We should have our spiritual preparation done, our physical preparation done. And if nothing happens, we move on. But if something does happen, then we are prepared and we're ready. And this is this should be our mindset. That's why Messiah says that we should watch always. 
that means be ready always because you know not out what hour the son of man does come of. we must always be alert so all this media all this phenomenon they're putting in the mainstream and social media and people making plans all looking towards the april april the 8th please go back to your scriptures go back to the most high and start looking at this month start looking at march and i'll go back to something i've said before that i believe that the most high is going to show us a sign which will confirm it beyond all reasonable doubt nearer to the time literally a week away or maybe two weeks away at the most just as he did the first time in exodus chapter 12 verses 1 and verse 2 that's when he started to reveal to the people when the um, darkness would take place uh, sorry when the signs of the times would take place in terms of the first exodus and actually if you think about the three days of darkness i read it this morning in uh exodus 10 21 i believe it is is that the three days of darkness moshe was told about it almost immediately as it was about to start not two weeks three weeks four weeks before he was told about that particular event just as it was about to start but they were ready. Obviously, he had briefed the people and they were ready. They knew what to do. And so should we be today. Let's stop relying on the media and watching these things that are giving us all these understandings and making us panic when the Most High hasn't told us to blink. What he has told us is to watch and stay close to him and he will reveal everything we need to know at its appointed time. So do we have any um, questions, comments, anything else that we can discuss? Brother Otis, do we have any other? Yes, so do you wanna go back to the questions we've had from the start? Yeah, yeah. Are, are there a lot? A few. A few. Okay, well, let's go through them. Let's Some see. of them probably been covered by now. Okay. Um, so, Norm Smith asks, Hi, all, does the illumination of con conscience precede the three days of darkness? Illumination of conscience. So, I guess that's kind of in awareness. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I if it's what I'm thinking you're saying, it's basically what I've just covered, that the Most High is going to give us more understanding, more awareness to what is going on around the time of the darkness. Definitely before. He's not going to do it after. What's the point of him warning us after? He's going to do it before. But at the same time, um, what you need to understand is that the Most High's word which has been written years and years and years and years in advance is already there, isn't it? It's it, all these things are written, the times, the seasons, the patterns, they're all there in his word. And once we take that word and then just do a tiny bit of research in terms of the seasons and the things going on in the world, I think we can actually already see the answer. So I hope that answers your question, but I do believe that enlightenment or awareness or consciousness will come during and before the three days of darkness and it's up to those who are connected to the most high to pick up on those things okay so next one um dready one said egypt america is facing judgment after the two eclipses so i guess that's just a statement comment yeah but yeah yeah i'm with I that well i think that will be the case yeah i'm with that i think i think the the sign the signs is similar to the first exodus that the most high was displaying his power throughout the land for his people to know his power and for his enemies to know his power but it was also a judgment to the egyptians for holding <clears throat> captive his people and i think it will be the same again it will be for us to see his power and the wicked to see his power but also it will be part of a judgment for what the wicked have done to the Most High's people. Okay. All right, Beverly Palmer said, I thought it was supposed to show signs in the sky first, which I guess you've 
already addressed in terms of the Most High will give us some kind of um, sign or revelation closer to the time. Yes, as he did yes. previously. That's right, in, and I, in... and I think, and I've also seen comments, and I think Sister Beverly might also be alluding to the um, Northern Lights. Okay. Um, that people are expecting to see and many people have seen in their dreams that these things will be happening more and they'll be more visible during the time of the um, the darkness. And yeah, pay attention to the signs in the sky. Pay attention that if you see these things going on around the time when, you know, the day looks very clear and very bright, around the time of, a pagan feast day around the time of all these things that the scripture foretells then pay attention and take action but yeah the the signs in the sky are definitely what um we need to be paying attention to but just remember the word always comes first mm -hmm. right right <laughs> very interesting one right. deborah has said watch for march 29th, 30th, and 31st. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is that all she says? Yeah, that's all she said. Okay. That's all she said. You heard it here. Yashara, yes, take heed of those dates. 29th, 30th, and 31st. I believe that is what they call Good Friday, then the Saturday, then Easter Sunday. And don't sleep on the Easter Monday as well, which is... Uh, well, I don't know if it's everywhere, but in the United Kingdom, it is a <clears throat> is a public bank holiday. Mm -hmm. Definitely look out for those times. And we are going to know some more things nearer to the time. But for now, just pay close attention to those pagan feast dates, as Deborah says. Okay. Um, just going through the chat. I can't see any more questions, to be honest. I think most of the stuff that's been asked has been, has been respond. Yeah, it's been answered either in the chat or you've answered it yourself. Okay, you've gone through. All right, great, yeah. great, great, great. So, brothers, sisters, um, that's all I've got for you today in terms of presentation. Not so much teaching, but well, I guess a bit of it is teaching, but more just enlightening, more just having some understanding of the signs of the times and the things that are going on more sorry yeah um, go for it sister beverly palmer uh. said um daniel yes she, no she asked what are the northern lights about oh what's the other name for the northern lights it's the same thing as the what is it aura borealis is it i think it's the same thing um somebody can clarify in the chat room but it's basically when you see the different colors that are in the sky. I don't know the scientific uh, explanation of it, mm. but it's things that you don't usually see oh, in yeah, in this part of the world or certainly not maybe in the United Kingdom. I don't think you see it also in the US, but now people are seeing it more. Yes, the aura borealis, that's the one. Mm. Um, so yeah. That that's I think what people refer to also as the Northern Lights is is one and the same thing. Um, look out for those signs because I've certainly seen a lot more of these things that I never saw before, and I know that there are people around the world that send in their pictures of what they see. These things are becoming far more common, and many people have had dreams that on the day before the darkness that these things are prevalent everywhere and so we should just look out for that but most importantly I, I, I'm not dismissing the signs at all but the word comes first if the word lines up with the signs perfect mm -hmm. but follow what the word says because I believe the word does show us what we need to know okay um well if there are no more comments or questions on the topic then we will end it here and thank you all for joining. Sorry about the technical uh, faults and difficulties. Please keep praying for us, praying for the channel and uh, we will do the same for you. We pray for all of those that join and all of those that leave prayers and positive comments, all of those that belong to the Most High. You are always in our prayers. And what I will also say to you 
is look out for the next live stream. I don't know if it's in two weeks' time or three weeks' time. It has the most high leads. But I believe the next live stream will be very revealing and will give you all you need to know in terms of confirmation of the sign. So look out for it. It will be coming soon. I'll keep you updated on the community posts. In the meantime, keep praying for us as we pray for you. As I leave you with the Most High's blessing, which he said to give all his people from the prophet Moshe down to Aaron. And he said, may he, the Most High, bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you. And may he give you shalom and a peace that surpasses all understanding. Stay tuned, Yasharal. Stay in the faith. And we'll see you soon. Shalom. Shalom, family.